everyone, it's Marguerite with Reese by Marguerite. I'm back again today for another tutorial. Today we are going to do a wreath for veterans. Um, Memorial Day is coming up soon if you're watching this as a brand new video. So I thought it'd be a great time to do some things for Memorial Day and for Father's Day. Um, in the tutorial I'm doing the veterans thank you wreath, but there are also kits for Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marine. If you watch the video, um, you'll see the signs that are available for the other kinds of wreaths. Um, the ribbon is going to be different with each um, branch of service. For example, the um, Army is going to have more greens in it. The Air Force is going to have blues and reds. The Navy is going to have yellows and blues. And then the Marines are going to have reds and blacks. So there's that. So join me today where I put together this wreath, which is a key, also a kit in the shop and see what we come up with. All right, here we go. Okay, so let's first go over what you have in your kit. First of all, you have um, written instructions for everything I'm teaching you today, as well as a thank you card. This would be a great place to put any notes you take from watching the video to help you with the process to refer back to. Then you're going to receive three pieces of mesh, not three pieces, three different styles of mesh. Two of them, this one, the thank you, and the blue and white, the stars, is going to be a two and a half inch ribbon, and then the red and white stripes are going to be a one and a half inch ribbon. They are all folded at 12 inches in length because that's the length that the tails need to be for the wreath, and that makes it easier for cutting them. You're either going to have one or two bundles of each ribbon, and that depends on where it was on the master roll of ribbon, whether they're going to be all 12 together or two piles of six. Um, doesn't affect the ribbon at all, meaning I make sure that if I take part of the ribbon from one rib ribbon roll and part of the ribbon from another ribbon roll, that the colors match perfectly. So that won't be an issue. Um, I just have four of each of the three ribbons here for cutting for the tutorial. Um, that should give you enough of a um, guide to do the cutting. I have the rest of my piles over here. So you have 12 to 13 pieces of each of the ribbon. I gave you an extra piece of each so that if you do make a mistake, you're not out in the cold as far as finishing this wreath. But the whole idea behind the, the, the kits is you're left with minimal extra materials so that if you're not going to do it again, you don't have a bunch of materials gathering dust or if you do you have the extra pieces as a guide for purchasing more if you want to do the same one again so i've made the bundles they look like this on this wreath we're going to put the thank you ribbon on top followed by the one and a half inch ribbon with the red and white stripes in the middle and then the blue with the white stars on the bottom and i've already pre-folded them with the finish side of the ribbon towards the inside of the bundles then the next thing that you're going to get in this kit is a veterans sign, proud military veterans, 12 inch metal sign. The holes are already poked in, poked in them on the bottom and the top from the manufacturer, so that'll make it easy to attach them to the wreath. We won't need any attachments on the back, cable tie mounts, any of that sort of thing. Then you received 12 to 13 pieces of deco mesh. You need 12. It's usually 13, sometimes 14, to be totally honest with you. This is what's called 10 inch mesh, 10 this way. They come in anywhere from 10 to 12 inches in, in width. They're all pre cut for you at 20 inches in length, left to right here. And it acts like Velcro. You'll see this more as we go along. So it's cut in 20 inch length this way, and it's 10 inches. So this is 10 inches this way, and you have to have 12 pieces. So 12 is a common number in this scenario. 12 pieces of each ribbon, 12 pieces of each mesh, and then you have 12 pipe cleaners on your wreath frame. Now, a couple of things about the wreath frame. It is a 14 and a half inch metal wreath frame and it has four rows of circle of the wire. It won't work if you have a wreath frame that has only three because you can't space 
the pipe cleaners evenly enough, okay? So what you're doing is you're putting six pipe cleaners, which is done for you in the kit, on the outside two rings, so ring one and two, at the crossbars, there's six crossbars. So the first set of six goes over the crossbar for the outer row. And then the inside pipe cleaners go around rings three and four, but they're centered between the crossbars, see that? So that you have a more even distribution of the mesh so it lays flatter. And it's a very flat ring versus what's called a wreath form, which is what you use for big and fluffy wreaths. So 12, pieces of each, 12 inches in length, 12 pieces of mesh, 20 inches in length, 12 pipe cleaners, six on the outside, six on the inside. One more thing that I wanted to talk about with the sign today is we are doing the, the veterans sign, but there will also be kits in the shop for each of the four major, um, most well uh, known, I don't know if that's the right word, but that's what I'm going with. Uh, branches of the military. So there will be army kits with corresponding colors of ribbon. You'll see that in the listings. Navy. Air Force. And Marines. So there will be a few of each of these kits available as well in the Etsy shop. Okay, now we're going to move these out of the way. We'll be using those today. We're just doing the, the veterans one, and that will be your guide for any of them. Okay? So let me get to the tools. You're going to need a good pair of scissors. This is my favorite brand, Fiskar brand. Um, they cut really nice. Don't let anybody use them for anything but the ribbon. Really dulls the blades. Then I have a wire cutter. I got this at Deco Exchange, my affiliate address for them is in the description of this video that's where I get a lot of my product as well as some of my tools you'll need a, a ruler and you'll see why in a few minutes and yes a chip clip that helps to hold the mesh and you'll see that in just a moment a needle nose so that you have problems pulling your pipe cleaners through the mesh I might need that maybe not on this one but I always have them ready and handy and then this is just a little wooden dowel. You can use a pen or a pencil. This is just to wrap the, the <clears throat> pipe cleaners around, making little piggy tails when you get to the end of the wreath. So let's get all this extra stuff out of the way that we're not going to be using right now. And get started with putting the mesh on the wreath. What we do here is we add the first six pieces of mesh to the outer two, two rings. That's going to be your bottom layer. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I always recommend that you have the pipe cleaners directly in front of you that you are working on so that it's easier to make sure you get the mesh in there. You don't want to do all the hard work. Let the wreath help you do the work. Don't be, what I mean is don't be uncomfortable when you're doing this. If you need to turn it side to side, you can do that. Being a left-handed person, I often turn mine this way and I work on this one this way, but I've been doing this for a while. So I would recommend, at least at first, try to stick with working on it this way. You'll get the best results. I'm going to move the sign a little further out of the way because we're not going to use it now. And I'm going to bring this here and bring my mesh up here because we're going to start putting the mesh in the wreath. See, it's Velcro. It's like Velcro. Just a warning, no matter what you do, when you use mesh, it acts like retail. Um, retail acts like um, Velcro. Another thing I would advise highly is making sure you wear short sleeves because again this is going to if it touches anything it's going to hook on to it and don't wear anything nice when you're working on this. If you do wear long sleeves just roll them up okay. So when we're assembling the wreath and putting the mesh on the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure you're your mesh is long ways in front of you with the curl side under, so curl side down, because we want to find the center, and that's where the ruler comes in. I'll show you another way that's easier if you don't have a ruler, but this usually helps. This is 10 inch mesh, 10 and a quarter inch, 
So our center is going to be just above the five on the um, ruler. So that's where the chip clip comes in. I put the chip clip at that marker and then I flip the mesh around and do the same thing on this side. A little over five inches is right here. When you have a patterned, a mesh with pattern in it, it's easier to ruffle and keep it straight. But I find having the chip clip on the top, whether you have pattern mesh or not, helps you keep your eye on the center for when you're gathering. <clears throat> so the next step is to take your thumbs on the outside of the mesh where the center is and then just crawl up the mesh, gathering it up into your thumbs. You can either pull the mesh towards you as you're gathering it or you can just go all the way up where it is and stand. Some people stand. I'm a sitter for a variety of reasons. Mostly mostly sitting, I should say. Towards the end, I'll do a little more um, standing, too. So what you're going to do is once you get it gathered up, you're going to loosely hold it in your thumb and forefinger so that you have it loose enough that if you need to make any adjustments, you can. What you're looking for at this point is to get a perfectly round circle where the outside edges meet here and the outside edges meet here, okay? Get that circle nice, and then you're going to bring that frame over to you and you're going to put the mesh in there vertically because you have put your pipe cleaner horizontal to you. So then you take your pipe cleaners up and really tight one time, you tighten up your, your pipe cleaner so it's low. That's the point, an important point because this is going to be a storm wreath. You want to keep the profile really low. And you're going to do the same thing two to three times, okay? Excuse me. And then I'm going to put the pipe cleaners up and out of the way. And I'm going to for form the circle again. But this time, I'm going to take the outside cut edge on one side over the inside cut edge there. <coughs> Pardon. Outside cut edge over the inside cut edge. And the reason I am so emphatic about that is because the cut edges are what cause fraying. And like I said at one point, you can never avoid fraying entirely. So the more you can protect the cut edge, the better minimizes exposure to getting frayed more. So then you take a look at it and that's obviously not a great circle. So I usually grab it from the pipe cleaners and you never grab your mesh on the edge. You grab it towards the center to bring it out to get it more of a rounded look. Just a, a, a hint, the outside edge especially on this layer, it is what matters as far as the rounding of the edges. You won't see any of this up here once the second layer of mesh is on and the two layers of ri ribbon. So don't beat yourself up if you can't get it right. You can always pull it back off and do it again, but I wouldn't do that very often. Again, the more you handle mesh, the more easily it frays. So we're making sure that this is as much of a circle as we can possibly get it. And then once we have it in our desired shape, which is basically a circle, we're going to try to turn under the edges a little, and that will help it stay in place. Since it's like Velcro, it sticks to itself and it'll stay better that way. So when I build these wreaths, I put the mesh in every other pipe cleaner. I just like how it looks and lays once I get it done when I do it that way, okay? So we're skipping that one for now, and then we're coming around here, and again, we're taking the pipe cleaners horizontal to us because we're going to put the mesh in it vertically. So again, take a piece, lay it down, curl side down. This is not an issue because that's not even going to be remotely noticeable. You can't even see it in the camera very well. There's a slightly darker line of uh, threading through this. Okay, so we get the ruler back out. Put the clip at five and a quarter. Turn it around. And a second later, I will show you my trick for not using the ruler. That's one less tool that you actually have to have. So I've now measured at five and a quarter. Put my thumbs on the outside, and I'm taking all my fingers and creeping up the mesh, bringing it towards me. Staying as close to the center as possible, focusing on that chip clip at the top so I can stay as much on center as possible. 
that helps it make it easier for making sure you have the circular form. So I'm loosely holding it in my index finger and thumb, making sure I've got my edges lined up, trying to keep it as close to a circle as possible. Now I'm going to bring it over here to the pipe cleaner that I've spread out vertically, horizontally, keeping it as centered as possible. There are a couple strings there. If they don't just loosely pull off, you can go back with your scissors and cut the uh, excess off. I like to do it as I go so I don't have a bunch of cleaning up to do at the end. So I did this nice and tight one, two, two to three. Get that loose one. And we're keeping it tight and low again to make sure that it stays under the four inches you're looking for for a storm to wreath. Okay, so now we're taking one side's out cut edge on the outside over the inside edge outside cut edge over the inside cut edge. Now this is off, so I'm just going to hold my pipe cleaners and grab it from the center a little to get this lined up a little bit better. That's a lot closer. Not handling the cut edge unless I absolutely have to. Making sure it's as close to the circle as possible. Now I have the luxury of seeing it in a camera, so I don't have to get up, but if you're not sure, stand up and look at it to see if it looks circular to you, okay? And then we're going to take those outside edges, curl them under just a little bit, okay? Keeping the outside edge nice and circular. You want it here as well, but if you can't get it just right, this is going to be hidden, so don't beat yourself up. And honestly, every time I make a wreath, every day that I start fresh, I honestly have to get back into the groove to get it right. So curl side down, and I've made thousands of wreaths, so yeah. So we're going to measure five and a quarter. It's right here. Turn it around. Remember, it's curl side down. I'm going to take that ruler and we're going to measure five and a quarter and gather into our thumbs with our rest of our fingers heading to the top of the mesh where the clip is, trying our best to make small gathers and stay focused on the center so it's perfectly round when we get done real quick. Gather in your thumb and forefinger. Make any adjustments to your circle that you feel you need to make to get the circle right. Then you're going to come back over here. The pipe cleaners are horizontal. I'm going to turn it a little bit to the side so you how I do it. This is how I set my wreath frame when I'm assembling. You might do it a little different in the opposite direction if you're right-handed. One, two, three tight and low twists. Bring it up out of the way and take the outside cut edge over the inside cut edge, outside cut edge over the inside cut edge. Take a look at that. I need to make an adjustment. There we go and that looks good. Holding it at the pipe cleaners and not grabbing it from the outside edge keeps you from changing the design because where you grab it, it's going to separate some of the um, fibers and you don't want to see that, especially on the edge where everyone's going to see, so that's set to go. So now we can go back and do the three in between these. So hopefully you're getting a better idea, more comfortable with how this is going to work, okay? So, next mesh, roll side down, curl side down, that ruler out, clip at five and a quarter, turn it around, do the same again, five and a quarter, it's got a couple pieces of fray there I'm going to cut right now so I don't have to fight with it when I'm trying to put it in the wreath. And always try to make sure you have a trash can nearby. Keep your work area as clean as possible so it's easier to get it done without getting frustrated. 
I am known sometimes at, at my studio to have too much on the table, and then it all starts attaching itself to the mesh as I'm turning the wreath around, and then I end up pulling stuff off the bottom when I'm done. Not a smart idea. So index finger and thumb. Make sure that's a circle. Make sure your ends are meeting as well as you can get them to. Okay, there's a loose fiber. Take that off. And now we're going to go in here. And we're going to put it in there. And then we're going to tighten up this pipe cleaner. Tighten well in the center of the mesh. Ooh. Don't be afraid of this. Give it some muscle. You want it to stay where you put it. Put this up and out of the way. And we're going to go outside cut edge over inside cut edge. Outside edge over inside cut edge. Okay, see how pointy that is and how not on here? I'm going to grab it right here. I could take it out and re-ruffle it. But I can usually fix this. You can usually fix this by holding the pipe cleaners or in worst case scenario, loosening up the pipe cleaners to get it right. But I'm going to show you what happens when I'm not happy with it. Or if you're not happy with it, you just take it out. And I'm not going to use the clip or the ruler because I know where the center is because see what it's done to the mesh? It's a little bit roughly. So I can just follow it up the center now. better position than last time it was not and I knew it wasn't right but I wanted to show you nobody's perfect and then it's an easy fix so we're gonna go back in here put this in there making sure it's centered tight and low three times two to three times in front of me and do outside cut edge over inside cut edge <clears throat> outside cut edge over inside cut edge okay we're going to turn in these under it's still a little pointy here so I am going to come up here sometimes the mesh can be the devil I can tell you we get up here and get a good grip bring it down what do we got going on here? So this needs to go this way. How's that look now? Oh, much better. Much better. Cut that off. There we go. Two more to go on this layer. I'm going to stick this over to the side right now because we're not going to be using those until after we work on the ribbon. So pipe cleaners horizontal. And mesh curl side down on the table. Take your ruler, clip at five and a quarter, turn it around, do the same measure, five and a quarter, and then ruffle up into your thumbs, creeping all your fingers up towards the center where that chip clip is. Doing our best. You can see how having a, rip, a mesh with a pattern on it would make it easier to keep it centered. Now, I already know I was off-centered on this one. Oof. Do one of my other little techniques here. I'll explain this more when we get to the top layer, what I just did. Okay. It needs to come out a little more. And holding it loose allows us to adjust without having to mess it up. Putting more <clears throat> changes in the way the mesh looks. The design. And this is lo looks like burlap, but it does have a lot of plastic in it too. That's one of the nice things about mesh is there's so many different types. And this one, you know, with all the plastic that's in it, allows you to be able to put it outside in the weather without damaging it and without it becoming droopy. Real 100% burla real burlap is going to get a little droopy if it's exposed to water. Okay, how's that look? 
looks better in the camera than it does to my face. That's why it's so important to get up and take a look at it if you aren't sure how it looks. There we go. Nice and round. Okay. Curl side down. This is the last one for this layer. Put the clip at five and a quarter. And put the ruler and start at five and a quarter and crawl up the mesh, gathering it into your thumbs. Using your index finger and thumb, adjust by keeping it loose in your hands. And then come back over here to your frame. Put your mesh in right down the center, vertically, tight and low, one, two, three, okay, now we're going to take that outside cut edge over the inside cut edge, the outside cut edge over the inside cut edge, make any adjustments, that seems a little off, but I'll get that fixed in just a second, I need to adjust it over there, I think that'll fix it. Nope, let's go over here. Still a little off. Okay, so now curl it under. There we go. Put that up. All right, so now that level's done with the mesh. I'm going to come over here, and we're going to get all of our ribbon prep because the next step is to put the first six sets of ribbon tails in here. Now, like I said, I pre-cut and prepared most of the ribbon for this so that we're not here all day. <laughs> I've left four of each of the ribbons that we need in this wreath. And like I said, they're 12 inches this way. And... Um, they're two and a half, two and a half, and one and a half inch in width. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to take your bundles that are pre-folded for you and find the center. And I usually put a few fingers in the middle because we're going to cut it at both ends. Like that. And down here at the other end. And an important step I find to be is to turn them all so the finished side is facing up. Um, this was easy to tell because there was words on it. But if you get to this one or a solid color ribbon, you, you follow the same routine. You put a few fingers in the center because the, the pattern is facing the table on one side of the stack and the pattern is facing the ceiling on the other side of the stack. When you have a solid colored ribbon, um, which we don't have in this read today, but if you have a solid color ribbon, it's very hard to tell the front from the back. So if when you're cutting it, you follow these steps, you could be assured that all of the finished side of your ribbon is gonna be faced up once you get it cut. So we're gonna go up here and cut it at the fold, keeping your fingers in the middle still. Down here at the fold with the fingers in the middle. So now you see you have two piles. So you wanna turn the bottom section of the stack over on top of the top section of the pack, okay? Now, if you were dealing with a solid color ribbon, you'd want to make sure you fold your ribbon in half right away so you don't get distracted or anything and come back and not be sure which is the top and the bottom, the finished side and the unfinished of the wreath ribbon. So what I usually do is when it's a solid color ribbon, I immediately fold them all in half with the pattern on the inside of the fold, okay? That way, if for some reason, like I said, if you're called away for some reason, you come back and you're not sure, this has been done already and there's no doubt. Now granted, most people aren't going to see the difference between the front and the back of the ribbon, but you are, and if you're anything like me, it bugs you. So that's just a tip, okay? So then we're going to go here and do the last ribbon. This is the one and a half inch ribbon, putting a couple of fingers in the center, okay? Cutting at the top where one fold is and cutting at the bottom where the other fold is. This looks almost exactly the same 
finish side up and finish side down. So it's really hard to tell. But I know that these two were facing the table and these were facing the ceiling, so I know I need to turn them over. So I'll go ahead and fold those. So we don't have to worry about, did I do it the right way or not? I hope this makes sense. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and ask me in the comments section or message me. Okay, so let's do this with these. Folding them directly in half. That fold serves the purpose of finding the center of the ribbon when we put it in the wreath and for when we cut the dovetails at the top, which we're going to do in just a moment. Okay, so now we've got them all folded. What we're going to do is cut these beautiful little V's. They are called dovetails or ducktails, whatever you want to call them. It's up to you, okay? So to do that, especially as a beginner, I recommend that you put that folded side down onto the table with the cut side facing the ceiling. And you're going to fold that ribbon directly in half so that the wires are even with each other. And you're going to cut from this folded side to the wired side at a 45 degree angle. And there you go. And you're going to do this on all of your pieces of ribbon. And you're going to do it at this point so that you have it all done and out of the way so that you, later they're all ready to go so it's not stopping you in your progress. Not that it stops you in your progress, but doesn't it make it easier to have all the prep work then? Fold it side down. Make sure those wires are even. Fold it exactly in half, wire to wire. Cut from the fold to the wire at a 45 degree angle. If I have some spare pieces, which I should, I will show you some troubleshooting solutions for your ribbon if you cut them wrong. Okay, so right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine. So I will have one spare. Okay. So now fold it side down, wire to wire, cut at a 45 degree angle. Fold it side down, wire to wire, cut from the cut the folded edge to the wire at a 45 degree angle. So fold it side down, wire to wire, cut from the fold to the wire. I'll save that one for the boo boo testing. You'll know what I mean in a minute. Fold it side down, wire to wire, 45 degree angle from the fold. Fold it side down, wire to wire. Cut from the folded side down to the wire at a 45 degree angle. Fold it side down. Fold in half, wire to wire, cut from the fold to the wire. Fold it side down, wire to wire, cut from the fold to the wire. Okay, so now I'm going to do some troubleshooting with you guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Actually, give me a second. We're going to make our bundles. We're going to have the thank you at the top. Then we're going to have the red and white, and then the blue and white. Folded. Thank you. Red and white. Blue and white. Thank you. Red and white, and blue and white. Okay, so now let's do the troubleshooting. So, first things first. Say you put it folded side down, folded it in half, but you didn't make sure. Let me bring that in. See how I don't have that lined up? That wire is way over there. I'm still going to cut it at a 45 degree angle. But now, if you look at it, 
that's a smaller V and that's a wider one. That is fixable. You might lose a touch of your ribbon length, but not much. All you have to do to fix it is this time go back and make sure it's wire to wire perfectly. And when you fold it, you're going to notice that there's a gap between this side and that side. Just cut slightly below it at the 45 degree angle and that will fix it. See, now they're even on both sides. Now another one of the mistakes people make I should take that back it's not necessarily a mistake but they like it when they make their V's super deep and I'm going to show you that and then I'll tell you why that's not a good idea so wire to wire fold it in half now instead of cutting it at a 45 degree angle I'm going to cut it way down here to that wire see how deep that V is yes it's pretty but what's going to happen is once you put it in the wreath, it's going to buckle like this because the V is going to cause it to fold over like that. But again, you can fix it without losing too much length in your wreath. You fold it back right, and this time you're going to start at the same point down here, but you're going to angle your scissors more so you get that 45 degree angle, and then that corrects that. Okay? Now I'm going to do one more troubleshooting problem. Cut that extra off. So we, in all examples, we had the um, wire uh, folded side down and the cut side up. We're going to accidentally, but on purpose, turn it where the cut side's down and fold it wire to wire and cut it at a 45 degree angle. This you can't recover from. So be very cognizant of how you set your ribbon on the table when you're prepping it, okay? So I'm hoping that that gave you enough understanding get rid of my trash on the mistakes that can occur and how you can fix them and why it's so important to follow the routine that I've laid down in this video, okay? So now we're ready for the wreath frame. And with the mesh, we had the pipe cleaners horizontal to us. Oop, sorry guys. <laughs> I am not a professional photographer. Can you tell? So now with the mesh, we had our pipe cleaners horizontal and put the mesh in vertically. It's the reverse with the ribbon. So we're gonna have the pipe cleaners vertical so that we can put in the uh, ribbon horizontally. Now on the bottom layer, two things. This has words on it. So we wanna make sure it's facing outside the, the wreath so that it's not upside down. And then there's one other step I'll show you that's different than the top. So we're going to take that point where we folded all the ribbon in half and we're going to gather it together right up the center into our thumb and forefinger. But we're going to go in underneath with our other hand and turn it into an upside down V. The reason that this is important is when you put it in here, doing that ahead of time before you tighten up your pipe cleaners makes it easier to keep your ribbon facing the outside edge of the wreath because if we don't do that, they're not going to see the ribbon at all. It's still going to have a mind on of its own and try to creep back up, but doing this adds a little extra help to keep it on the outside. So now we put the ribbon in the pipe cleaner and we're going to just twist it tight and low one time. And then we're going to start twisting it in an upward fashion to create a one inch twist, a minimum of a one inch twist. So see that? And then we have all this extra that is just an inch. So I'm going to take the wire cutters now and try not to make a ton of noise and cut off the excess that is not twisted up and remove it. And then I'm going to tuck that stub of pipe cleaner into the mesh and we're going to separate our ribbon out the way you want it to be displayed. So I want it to be blue on the outside, but top then the red and the white, and then the thank you. Okay, so there is that. If you get any bubbles uh, from the gathers, you can just reach up under the ribbon and pull, push out the bubbles. See, I'm going to do it at the beginning here on this side. So now on this side, 
I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to have the blue down. So I'm going to grab the red and the thank you and pull it up out of the way. Bring the stars down. Red will still be in the center and then the thank you on top. And I like to hold it at the pipe cleaner and position it all. Again, just like the mesh, never grabbing it from the cut edge. Grabbing it up a few inches to get it where you want it to be. And then again, like on the mesh, I'm going to skip one and go to the next one. Again, this helps with layering it to stay uh, flatter since it is the storm door style. We're going to take our next bundle. <coughs> take it where that's folded. Gather it up the center. <coughs> Fold it in half. Take the other hand. Put it in there. One tight. Pardon, guys. <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. So we've tightened low on the pipe cleaner. Now we're going to go tight and in an upward fashion. I say about six to eight times twisting it like this. Usually gives you the inch. And then you cut the excess off. Throw that away. Tuck it into the mesh and out of the way and position your ribbon again remember outside was this one then the red and white and then the thank you <coughs> this side we're going to pull, pull the top two up and bring that blue and white down here put that there we're going to put that there okay i like to hold it there and position it all get the bubbles out lay it flat it's gonna fight you it's gonna move you'll have to adjust it at the end but it's good to do that so there we go we're skipping that one we're going to the next one and get our third set and remember each time making sure you don't have the thank you upside down so we're going to gather it where it was folded in the center into one hand and then take the other hand and bring it down like that put it in the pipe cleaner Tighten low once, and then tighten in an upward fashion to make a one inch stud. Cut off the excess, tuck in that pipe cleaner, and then position all your ribbon. I'm doing, I'm grabbing the top two to separate them. And you can put your elbows into this, it's not going to come out of that pipe cleaner if you jerk on it a little show who's in charge to get it where you want it to be okay now I'm gonna go back later I'm gonna give you guys another tip there is a little bit of a crease in this ribbon I'm gonna go back once I'm done with a small width hair straightener and I can get that out it serves just like an iron it's a great addition to your craft tools it helps you get all those wrinkles out. Nothing's worse. We used to take an ironing board and put the ribbon on the ironing board and iron it because ribbon's not cheap. We don't want to just throw it away, right? But one of my other mentors came up with the idea of using the hair straightener for something, and I'm like, oh, yes, this is great. I take it with me to craft shows all the time, too, because it also helps give the ribbon a little bit of a curl when I want to fluff up the ribbon, and if it gets... <clears throat> If it gets a little messed up when it's traveling, it's nice to be able to refresh the ribbon without having to put new ribbon on it. Time saver and money saver. So again, the pipe cleaner is vertical. Turn this around. Thank you's facing me. Gather up the center with finger and forefinger there. Use the other hand to bring it down into the inverted V. We are now doing the final three on this layer. Tighten low once and then up and twist to make that one inch stub. Cut off the excess. Push that down into the mesh. We want to hide those mechanics as much as possible. It's also why I try to use pipe cleaners that match the, match the mesh as much as possible so it blends in. Because if this goes on a door that has a glass insert, the less busy the back looks, the better, the more finished it looks. 
get these in place. Different things to think about. Couldn't be so afraid. Oh, it came right out. Okay. So now we'll go to this one, turn the pipe cleaner horn vertical. Grab another stack. <clears throat> Gather the center. Other hand, pull it down into a V. We are not doing the V on the top layer, and you'll see why when we get there. Tighten the once, and then twist up an inch. You can wait and cut all the pipe cleaners after you get all of the bundles in on each layer, but I like to do it as I go so that if I do get sidetracked for any reason and I come back to it, I haven't forgotten to do something and miss it later. Separate out the ribbon. It's just little tricks I've learned along the way. You will find the ones that work best for you. And if you notice, I'm flip-flopping the wreath rather than contorting my body to make the adjustments in the ribbon that are needed. Be comfortable. This is fun time. Let's get our last one for this layer. Gather it at the center. Put it in the finger, forefinger and thumb. Take the other hand and make a V on the bottom. Upside down. Put it in the pipe cleaner. Twist tight and low once. And then make an upward twist until you get about an inch. Cut off the excess. I'm going to put all these in my trash bag. There we go. Push that pipe cleaner stub down into the wreath. Pop your bubbles out at whatever point you want to. That one was really bugging me, so I did that one first. So now we're going to take that blue out and up. Fix the bubble. Out into the center, and then bring the thank you down here. I run my fingers over it as I go because it gives it a little bit of curl. And then we're going to take the blue on this side. See, I've turned the wreath. Blue down. Again, red in the middle, and the thank you in the top. Adjusting it. Okay, so now we've finished the first layer. Now it's repetitive motion on the top layer with a little bit of differences when we get to the ribbon, okay? So now we're going to bring up the second set of pipe cleaners that are on rings three and four up between each two pieces of mesh from that bottom layer. Bring them up so you can work with them. This one up, so that's one, two, three, four. We've got two more to pull up. You can do this as you go, but I always recommend to do it at first so you can just. Routine is important, in my opinion. Okay, so now we're back to kneading the mesh. And I said on this layer, I was going to show you a slightly different way to prep the mesh for this layer. I'm going to take all my pipe cleaners. Making them horizontal, so I don't have to do that when I get to it, after I have the mesh in my hands, so I'm multitasking, I don't like to do that. Okay, so those are all ready, so we're still going to have the mesh curl side down, okay? But what if you don't have a ruler? It's not a big deal, all you do is fold the mesh in half, and you put your clip in there where the half is, turn it around. Fold it in half again. Isn't that easy? We're still going to gather it in our thumbs, going up the center, using all our fingers to pull it down into our thumbs, making a bunch of small gathers. Okay. Take the clip off. Make sure it's round. Go ahead and go over to the frame and put the mesh in vertical. Bring the pipe cleaner up tight and low once, then two to three times, again keeping it tight and low because this is a storm wreath. And now we're going to take the mesh outside cut edge over inside cut edge, outside edge over inside cut edge, and take a look at it, see if it's nice and round, curling those uh, edges under. 
this is going to be hidden by that big sign so remember that but try to keep it as circular as possible that came out good bring that just a touch more that way okay i'm gonna again i'm gonna skip the next one and go to this one <clears throat> And I'm going to put it on the table, curl side down, fold it in half, put my finger in there, my index finger there, this is my center. Turn it around. You'll notice these look a lot tighter of a curl because they're further into the roll of mesh that's been cut. You'll find that happens. And when, the, when that's the case, I also try to use the pieces of mesh I've cut further into the roll onto the top of the wreath. And that's how they are in the bundles of mesh you get in your kits, okay? So you're using them in the order of the size of the curls. Let's gather that up. The next one after this, I'm going to show you a slightly different way of gathering. I am one of those people that likes to mix it up a little bit, so I'm not doing the exact same thing over and over. And when you've made a couple thousand wreaths, it's nice to make up, mix up the process a little bit. So we skip that one, so this one's next. <clears throat> Bring that in vertically. Tighten the one, two to three times. Get that out of the way for now and take that outside cut edge over the inside cut edge it gets a little bit busier to do because you've got everything on the bottom layer there as well that you're navigating to get that in there get that turned a little bit better let's see so see it's hiding a lot of the ribbon underneath don't mess with the ribbon yet wait till we get it done and then you can pull them all out so they're visible so let's go to this one because we're going to skip that. All right, let me add another idea to your routine. It's up to you how you do it. So we're still going to go with curl side down. Let me put this on here so it holds it down for me. Okay. I'm still going to bring the curl out. I usually use the end of the table to uncurl it. <clears throat> Fold it in half. Clip it at the halfway mark. Turn it around. This is also nice because it holds it down when you're gathering, too, to have this there. It's up to you. I use my phone sometimes. Whatever is heavy around me. <laughs> I'm going to take it off. So I've got the center, and now I'm just going to use one hand and have this hand hold it down after I get started. Okay? I find this works the best for me. But I've also been doing this for six years at this point. So. Okay. Loosen the index finger and thumb. Get that circle going for you. Try to get that stuff all matched up. And come back over here and put that mesh in vertical. Bring that pipe cleaner up. Tighten low two to three times. One, two, three. Okay. Get that out of the way for now. Bring that mesh up. What's it stuck on? That's unusual. There we go. <clears throat> Get that one out of the way. Cut edge over cut edge. Outside cut edge over outside, inside cut edge. Let me see. How does that look? Again, stand up and look at it if you're not standing up while you're create. You're not a stander while you create. A little bit of fray that all came right out. It's always nice when it comes right out. Okay, so now we're going to go back and do the final three pieces of mesh. So curly. Fold it in half. Oh, I didn't even measure it at the top. Ooh, see, this is what happens. Sometimes I forget what I'm doing. I think I'm in my studio just creating by myself. Um, I don't clip both ends when I do it by myself. Again, that comes with experience. 
at the, at the beginning you absolutely should follow the directions detail for detail so you find your comfort zone because in the kits you don't get a bunch of extra materials don't forget about that so do not try to cut your ribbon in multiples at the same time that comes later I will show you that in more advanced classes tutorials later on let's see if I get that in there vertical Feel free to stop and start the video and repeat looking at different aspects of it till you're sure you're ready. I've received some pictures from a few of you that have purchased kits and you guys are rocking it. Okay, I know that's not right because that's way pointing over there so I hold that there and it's over here that it's going to affect. Let's see. Over here. How's that look? This right here is... Okay. Curl those under. Stay. Alright. Two to go. Curl side down. Hold it. Use the edge of the table to uncurl it. <laughs> it really does help. Okay. Fold it in half. Clip the center. Fold it in half. Clip the center. See, because it's more from the center of the roll. It's just going to do its own thing. That's why I like to hold it with my hand, one hand. Hold it in your index finger and thumb. Adjust your mesh. Get it. There we go. No. It's not out enough. Okay. Go up here, put that in there, tighten low two to three times, one, two, three. This stuff's pretty sturdy so don't be afraid to put your elbow grease into it. I need to bring that up a little bit more, yeah, there, that one there. Cut edge over the cut edge, making sure the outside cut edge is over the inside cut edge. It really does help with keeping that minimally frayed. I'm going to take this last one. <clears throat> A piece of mesh just determined to be right in the middle of things. All right, fold it in half, place this here, turn it around, see it's really curly when you get to the center of the roll of mesh, all right, gather it into your thumbs with your fingers, all of them using them all. Going right up the center using that clip at the top as your guide. Get that out of the way we we'll get to it. Holding it loosely in your forefinger and thumb. Positioning it so that it stays as close to a circle as possible. Transferring it over into the pipe cleaners which are vertical. Putting the mesh in. No, the pipe cleaners are horizontal, the mesh is going in vertical. <coughs> Take those pipe cleaners around the center, tight and low, one, two, three twists, two to three twists. I always put the pipe cleaner up in the air so it's out of the way. Take that outside cut edge over the inside cut edge. 
the outside cut edge over the inside cut edge. Check out your circle, see if it is approved. Make any adjustments necessary. Okay, so then curl up the edge of the mesh as much as you can. And now this is where I'm gonna stand up. So, this is not good right there, let me fix that. What's going on here? go all right when you don't have a big sign like this you can do it a slightly different way I'm personally an advocate of having the ribbon lay on top of the sign a little bit to frame it it's up to you whether you put the next layer of a ribbon in before the sign but I do the sign first I position my pipe cleaner so that one set is at 12 o'clock and one is at six o'clock, you know, like a regular clock. So 12 o'clock, one, two, three, four, five, six. So 12 and six, because it's those pipe cleaners in which the um, wreath sign is gonna go in because the pole is here and here. So I move the other ones out of the way and I'm gonna take one side of the pipe cleaner and put it up through the hole and I'm gonna twist it one or two times and then I'm going to put the ribbon in there when we go back to do the ribbon. Now put this in. We're not doing it too tight because we want it to sink in to the, the wreath a little bit. We don't want it sucked in because then it'll cause the sign to bow a little bit. Curve. We don't want a curvature in the, in the sign. So now I'm putting the other one in tight two or three times, one or two times. And there we go. Make sure your pipe cleaners are, I always hold it in the center like that. Bring my pipe cleaners out. <clears throat> and now it's time to put the rest of the ribbon in. When I put the ribbon tails in on the top layer, I do 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock last because I like the way the ribbon lays on top of the other bundles. Okay, so I usually do either these two first and then these two, or these two first and then these two. Either way, keep the pattern the same. Now I always turn it so I'm working, what I'm working on is directly in front of me. So we are still going to make sure that we gather it up the center, but we're not gonna make that inverted V. We're gonna put it into the pipe cleaner and twist it tight and low two to three times. One, two, three okay now I'm just gonna get out of the way for a second <clears throat> so now we're gonna separate the ribbon out you need to determine the pattern in which you want to do that on the top layer I'm gonna put the thank you in the center and I'm gonna put every other with the blue up with the stars and the red and white down and then so that one will be with the red up and the blue down to give it a little more dimension I'm gonna turn that popping out the bubble that it creates from gathering. I lift them up and separate them. I'm gonna bring the blue and stars up here. I'm gonna bring the red and the white down here and the thank you in the center, okay? So then I'm going to do this one next. This is an important step. Make sure you don't have your thank you upside down because this is gonna be the, see how that's gonna look? We're gonna turn it so that it's easy to read right side up there. So we're gonna gather it in the center. And it's gonna be the opposite of that one. So see, that was that, was that way, so we're gonna go that way there. Take that, put it in the pipe cleaner. Tight and low, two to three times. And then turn the wreath to work with the ribbon. And we're spreading it out in a starburst, pat starburst patterns. And again, remember I said this was blue up. This is red up. Blue down. Okay. We run our fingers over it as we get it in there to keep it nice and curly looking. So now we're going to go and push those two up out of the way and bring the blue down and the white and red up. Running our fingers over it as we spread it out to give it that nice curl, okay? I'm gonna save the pipe cleaners to last, so remember, do not cut the pipe cleaners. 
Okay, so now we're going to the other side and skip in the center, the six o'clock, we're gonna do this one and this one. And since we did this one first, we'll do this one first, okay? Keeping the thank you right side up in front of you, gather it up, bring it over into the pipe cleaners. <coughs> Tighten low two to three times. Okay. Get very dry talking. Sorry about that. So this is going to be the same as that one because this one's going to be the same as that one. Okay, so we're going to lift the top two up and spread them out. This is one way to do it. Getting those bubbles out. Put that thank you in the center. Turn it around so it's easier for you. Separate these two, and I'm tugging, and I'm pretty good. Don't be afraid to. This is good stuff. It stands up, as long as you don't go crazy. Okay. Now we're here again, so the ribbon that says thank you is going to go the opposite direction. Okay. So that means we're going to go like that. It's upside down to me. Gather the ribbon. Bring it up into that. Tighten low three times. Two to three times. One two, three. Okay, let me get that out of the way. Now, since the blue is there, the red is going to be there on this one. So we're going to separate them. I usually run my fingers over the ribbon as I'm putting them into position to give them that curve, that curl. So red and white up, blue and white down. Thank you in the center. Okay, now we're ready for 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. So I'm going to do 6 o'clock first. So since the blue ribbon was up there, the red is going to be up here. Okay, so we're going to make sure this is faced directly so that it's right side up. Gather that center. Put that in the pipe cleaner. Twist tight and low two to three times. One, two, three. Okay. bring it up. This is going to be red up, blue down. So there we go. I'm going to put my fingers over the ribbon to curl it and straighten it out at the same time. Do the same thing with the thank you. Same thing on this side, having turned it so it's easier for me to work with. Okay, now we're going to have to turn this upside down to do the 12 o'clock. So that means we're going to need to put thank you upside down to us because it's the top. Gather it on your thumb and forefinger. Tighten low with the pipe cleaners two to three times. One, two, three. And then separating on our ribbon. So since red is up on that side and that side, we're going to have blue that direction. So let me see. It's turned a little bit more than I like here. That's from how I gathered it. <clears throat> can you avoid that entirely? I haven't found the way yet. I suppose you can. All right. So now I'm going to turn it right side up so you can see that it's finished. We're going to go back now and address the pipe cleaners. There are two ways to, at least two ways you can address the pipe cleaners. You can continue to twist them up towards the top of the pipe cleaner. So you get a big nub like you did on the bottom layer. And you can cut it off here and tuck it under the ribbon before you spread out the ribbon and just have a little nub there. You could put some cute um, patriotic buttons or tool or something there, little attachments, or you can do like I'm going to do today. We are gonna take, and don't worry about the ribbon being out of sorts right now because we'll go back at the end to fix it. So what I always like to do as on a basic wreath style is to take 
this wooden dowel. Remember I said this was for twisting the pipe cleaners? You could use this, you could use a pen or a pencil, they're about the same diameter. And you're just twisting the pipe cleaner around the dowel till you get to the base of the pipe cleaner. You can either spread it out so you can see the curly cue, or you can tighten it up and low in the center, which is what I'm going to do today. Okay? And then it'll be done. All six sets of them. I also, <clears throat> a lot of times you're going to get <clears throat> your pipe cleaners uneven. I like to cut the excess off so that they're both the same length. So there's some uniformity to the curlies. You can use styrofoam balls on the pipe cleaners. If you curl them up and then pull them out a little bit, you could put some styrofoam glitter balls on them. Cut that excess off that's longer. Roll it on that dowel until you get down to the base of the pipe cleaner. There's that. <clears throat> How's the length? I'm going to cut that a touch so that they're even. And I usually roll one one way and then I roll this one the other way. Again, trying to get the look to be uniform throughout. <clears throat> flowers in here too. I've done that in some other videos. You'll have to go back and watch some like the Easter and a patriotic custom order I did on here. Wherever your creativity takes you, go for it. All right, this is the last one and I'm going to stand back up, take a look at it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go under the top layer and bring that ribbon out to the edge as much as I can, not holding the tip of the ribbon because we don't want it to fray the more you handle it. That can cause fraying on the ribbon as well. I'm trying to look at the pattern I had. <laughs> <clears throat> Piece of mesh on me. Bring that out. Some of them did a better job of staying at the outer edge than others. It all has a mind on it of its own, just like us, right? It's the last one on the bottom layer. Okay, so now I'm going to do 6 o'clock and 12 o'clock last. I'm going to go back in here and run my fingers over it. Or you could use this to give your ribbon some curl. And a pencil or the dowel. It works really well. Do it one ribbon at a time or all three at the same time. It's up to you. See how I made that even curlier? You would want to leave the ribbon tails flatter like these are if you're putting it behind a sternder wreath so they don't get crunched. But even if they get pushed down, it's not going to change the look. I always like to um, make them super poofy, the ribbon tails, when I do craft shows because that way they can see how big and plush it really looks. Curl it for me to 6 o'clock. 
you'll find the better quality ribbon that you buy, the less problems you're going to have with it staying where you want it to. And a good wire is always very important in wired ribbon. That's going to get it to stay where you want it to stay as well. Look at that. And there we go. There we go. Okay, so what do you think? Not too bad, huh? Not too difficult. I do lay everything out for you pretty detailed. You can always go back and forth through the video if you have any need for more more um, looking at it to see exactly what needs to be done. And also feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. I have several people that do so. And at this point, I can still take the time to answer any questions or concerns you have. And if you do get this kit, please send me a picture. I would love to see what you come up with. The wreath kits are available in the Etsy shop. Um, that stuff is down in the uh, description. I also have a Facebook page and following. I'd love it if you followed us there. That same name, Reese by Marguerite. And then here on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe so you're notified anytime I do a new video. Generally, the tutorials are on Sundays. That's not always the case. I try, try, try to keep it consistent in the afternoon. Um, kits, again, the kits come completely supplied with all the product that you need to make this wreath exactly how you see it today. Um, just need very basic tools otherwise. Watching the video, you'll see what that is. And if you buy a kit, you'll come away with written instructions and a special thank you gift card. So for a 10% discount off of a future purchase. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope to see you again soon. And thank you for sharing some of your day with me here with Reese My Marguerite. Bye-bye.